Okay, let me shift to one last topic to give you, to help you get going on the assignment. And that is this whole issue of area and space planning. And let's kind of show you how that actually works. Okay, let's go through and I'm going to go over to phase two back over here. Actually, I could even do it over here because I have this nice building just waiting for me. I'll put a couple walls in there. Maybe some nice interior walls as opposed to these curtain walls. So I'm going to put some oh, kind of hallway walls in here. I'm going to put in some just sort of subdivisions. Okay, now as we are working with rooms and we try to create a schedule that shows us the area in all the rooms, most of you noticed there was sort of a little problem <coughs> with that schedule and that that schedule and the room area that it sort of encompasses, you know, doesn't actually include the space between the walls because the rooms are defined to actually, let me zoom on in, be right up to the boundary, okay, but not actually include that space in between. And that actually adds up quite to be quite a significant amount. And even more important, because as you do your overall planning, if you haven't really divided the space up into rooms, it's kind of messy to try and create a room schedule because there's sometimes you just want to know how much space is in that whole area, okay? And that's what we're going to talk about first. Okay, there are rooms, and rooms is sort of a very easy way to sort of tabulate things, but there are times you want to know about how much space is in an entire area. And when you want to know that, if you go to the Home tab, you'll find room and area over here. We'll use area, which is kind of the, oh, the one that's a little less common to use, but we'll show you how it works. When you want to talk about areas, what you want to do is create something called an area plan. So go ahead and choose that, but don't go too fast because there's an important choice for you coming right up. Okay, there's a very important choice right here is, is it rentable area or is it growth area? Okay, now, if you're in real estate, you really care about this a lot. If you're an architect, you tend not to think about this so much. But rentable area is very, very important if you're the owner of a building in that you can't rent all the space in the building. The area, oh, it's actually there's a very elaborate set of rules, BOMA rules, which talk about if it's your office and there's a corridor on the side, how much of the wall space you actually pay for. Do you pay halfway through the wall? Do you pay to the outer surface of the wall? Do you pay to the inner surface of the wall? And there's different rules for corridors versus stairways versus elevator shafts versus the exterior surface. And it seems kind of like a silly distinction, but if you really had a gigantic building with a couple hundred thousand square feet in it, it can make a huge difference in terms of how much rent you're paying every month. So these rules are, in the world of real estate, really very carefully monitored. People care about these rules. For our design work, we're not quite so precise. So rather than going for rentable, we'll go for gross building areas, okay, which is going to say that, hey, when we say that we're going to a wall, we'll go ahead and draw where that wall boundary wants to be and not be too smart about using its rules to sort of move that line to the inner or outer or center of a wall. Okay. So choose that you're going to create a gross building area plan. Okay. There's this whole issue of not duplicating existing views. You can turn that on or off. If you don't see the levels that you need, you might want to turn that off. So I'm going to make one for level one. I'm going to say no to that right now. Kay. I now have, it looks an awful lot like a floor plan, but it's actually a gross building area plan down here. It has all the walls and stuff that I want in there. Kay. But we're now ready to go ahead and start dividing that up into lines. And how we do that is under the area tool, you'll find area boundary lines. And where, what do you do with area boundary lines? Well, you can pick them or draw them but what you want to do is find your walls and sort of pick where you want that to be. Here it said apply area rules. Actually, I'm going to turn that off because I don't want that to happen. For my gross area, I want it to actually sort of indicate the outer area, the full area. 
So I'm going to say pick that again and not apply the area rules. And if I zoom in to a higher level of detail, I can even get on down to the issue of where the outer face of the core is and stuff like that. And we're not going to be so picky about that for our purposes here, but if you're working with planning, that's where they really want it to be. It's what's considered the outer face of the core. So you pay up to the studs is what it comes down to, or the it's counted up to the studs. So I can put some lines down that are going to sort of represent the overall area. These lines, it's going to turn out, aren't quite as picky as some others. So these can be a little bit imprecise. I'm going to put a line down there. Let me zoom on out. I'm going to put one at the other end. Uh, if you're just going in really quickly, you could even just draw a rectangle. As long as you're close, you're going to be OK. And I will put a line down here. Looks like they all <coughs> zoom to the outside there. Yeah, that'll work. OK, I put some area boundary lines. I actually have encompassed some area. Hopefully, if my lines are, if they're at all close to joining on the corners, it's not kind of the pink line precision, but as long as you're close, it'll do a pretty good job of figuring out what the area is. I can drag in something called an area. And when I put it in, it'll show me that's an entire area. It'll show me what the square footage of that area is, because that's actually one of the things it reports. That's about 15,934 square feet in that area. Okay, just for that whole floor right now. And if I go moving the walls around, if the lines are going to associate themselves the way I hope they will, I think the area will go through and update itself too. Okay, so it's doing pretty good. Now for these areas, You'd want to not only have sort of the overall gross area, you often want to go through and start subdividing the area a little bit. So I can put some area boundary lines in and say that, you know, this whole section of the building on this end is going to be the CE department. And this whole section of the building down on this end is going to be the architecture department. So I can say that this is an area over here okay, of one size. <coughs> and this is another area on the other side. This is going to be another type. Okay, so I got two different areas. So far, so good. Okay, let's talk about what you can do with those areas. Those areas are actually objects too. So if I choose the area and look at its instance properties, you'll see areas can have names, they can have numbers, they can have a certain type to them. That's all okay. You might want to go ahead and give that a name. Oh, something like. Uh, I'm going to call that civil engineering. Kay. Maybe down here on this side, I can give that one a name too. Another way to give it a name is actually just to edit the tag. I can tab right into there and call that architecture. Okay, so I got two different names right there. Okay, so you go ahead, take your building, you draw the area boundary lines, and just start assigning this area belongs to you, this area belongs to you. Okay, at a higher level, that's all we're really asking you to do for the assignment: is go through and say, a certain amount of area is going to go to civil, a certain amount is going to go to electrical, a certain amount is going to go to architecture. Sort of divide things up. On top of these things, though, there's a couple things that we can do. One is do something called adding a legend to it. Let me show you what that looks like. That's actually sort of a very useful thing. If I put a legend on and drop it right in, okay. well, what do you want to talk about? And we're going to go ahead and talk about uh, the gross building area. Okay, let's take a look at what's happening over here. It colorized both things. Oh, Based on the notion of this, that's all considered gross building area. Let's go ahead and colorize it a little bit differently, though. I can choose that legend. I can see something called editing the scheme. And let me go ahead and make a new scheme. I'm going to do this sort of uh, by department. In my department scheme, I'm going to say that the, uh, find it here. 
change it by name. So it'll have a different color for things named architecture versus a different color for name things named civil engineering. Say OK. And it'll just give me some really quick indication of really how that's divided up. So this is, again, just all, all about just being able to visualize very quickly. We have sort of different square footages. I sort of know that belongs to civil, that belongs to architecture. So even at a real high level floor plan view, I sort of get a real quick idea of how that stuff divides out. Now, in addition to sort of this graphical representation, because what you want to do is go through and sort of divide up the areas and create this thing. This is what I call a color fill legend. So let me again show you how you did that. Go through, and I'll take the legend out. Well, actually, it's just not showing the legend. Funny, how do I take it out once it's in there? I'll have to think about that. <laughs> it's like it's, hmm, there must be a way. Okay, but once you have the legend in there, again, wh where I pull the legend from is over here in room and area. Once you put the legend in there, you can choose it, and you can say edit the scheme. And in this scheme, now you can go through and create a different scheme and choose which var variables or which colors it is that you want to go ahead and associate with the different departments. Okay, that gets you sort of halfway there. I'd also like to sort of numerically see just how these all add up. You know, for these two department or two areas on one floor, it's not so critical because you can sort of figure that out just by looking at the chart. But across three or four different floors, you might want to add those up. What do you do? Kind of like we created a room schedule, we can create a view, which is called a schedule of areas. And within that, I can say, oh, on a specific level, I have a area type that has a name. And what is the actual area in that? You know, I'm going to want to put a grand total on there. In fact, I could even sort of subsort it out and say, show me, oh, I'm going to do it by the name. That will sort of break it by the department. So I can sort of subtotal like uh, all the different departments. And let's total those areas. Okay, so now I can start to see that so far in my allocation, the architecture department has 8,000 square feet, the civil engineering department has 11,000 square feet, and as I continue to add new floors, I can keep track of how much I've allocated to each of the different departments. Now, again, this is dynamic, so... Where would I put it? Oh, it's in the gross area plan. That's where it is. Where am I? If I decide that uh, architecture has too much space, civil needs more, I can just pull that down, readjust it real quickly, and that will change as well as that schedule will change. So a perfectly valid thing to think about doing is with your floor plans up and it'll open in one window and the schedule in the other one, if you need to do a little balancing between the departments, just pulling those lines around a little bit and see if you can kind of come up with about the right mix of spaces between the different departments. That make sense? Beauty. Let's go ahead and just adjourn there for today. I was going to show you a little bit more about doing room plans. Well, let me show you. Let me just, I'll give you <coughs> the quickest on it. You can see on level one, phase one, there's a bunch of rooms that are defined. And there's an area room or a room legend over here that's based on the names. Did the same thing to create this. So go ahead and look at this as an example. I just pulled in the legend. And then for the legend, if you edit its scheme, you'll see that all it's doing is colorizing based on what's considered the occupancy of the room. Again, where is the occupancy? If I choose the rooms and edit its instance properties, that is just one of the variables. Okay, so you can do the same thing. It's very common to go ahead and have at your highest level sort of the overall area scheme that just kind of shows you how much you allocate to the different departments. Do that first, and then later on, you can go through and actually for the rooms, go through and allocate them to specific departments. So in your floor plans, we asked you to, and it would be really nice to go ahead and have kind of a room legend like this, because that makes it really easy to spot, oh, the greens are the classrooms, the blues are the offices, the meeting rooms are kind of the tan color. Just real easy to give you a lot of just very visual clues. And people respond really well to it, as opposed to having to look at all the detailed labels and stuff like that. So I get a pretty good sense. It's a lot of office, uh, some meeting space, and one classroom. Okay, I can read that from like you know 20 feet away. 
that's a good way to sort of organize things. Okay, beauty, let's go ahead and now I will adjourn as opposed to dragging out one more topic. And that should give you enough to get going with the assignment stuff. So please, 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 between now and Tuesday, dive in, try at least creating some overall shapes. They may not be very well articulated right now, but at least see if you can get about the right amount of space so we can start dividing that up so that next week we can spend a lot of time answering questions about your specific design problem. But see if we can get that phasing of the design options thing working together in terms of creating the views. Because once you get that down, designing your building is actually kind of easy. You just got to get yourself working within that framework properly. Okay, let us break. <laughs>